So Gaijin has decided to add the M6A2E1 heavy tank to War Thunder as a battle pass reward. Some people are a bit confused about it, since it's being called a fictional design when it obviously existed in real life. That part's pretty straightforward, so in addition to that, I'm going to be talking about some of the history behind the tank, as well as how it'll probably fare in War Thunder. The M6A2E1 is based off the M6 heavy tank, which was developed during 1940. The original M6 had a 76mm gun, which was more than suitable for armored threats at that time. By the time the US joined World War II though, the M6 was deemed too unreliable and generally didn't fit US armored doctrine anyway. It was still retained for propaganda and testing purposes, and in 1944 there was a proposal to upgrade some of them for use in the European theater. US leaders anticipated having trouble crossing heavily fortified areas like the Siegfried Line, so they began to look for solutions. Purpose-built answers like the T-28 Super Heavy and T-29 Heavy seemed too far off to make a difference, so it was believed that M6s could be modified for the task. In addition to a T-29-like turret, they also received the 105mm T-5E1 gun. They would also have their armor increased to 7.5 inches. All of this would give it a combat weight of 77 US tons, or 69.9 metric tons. When Eisenhower got a good look at the design, he basically said what the hell is this? No, this is totally impractical. And with that, the program was cancelled. Despite this, two M6A2E1s were made as test beds for the T-29 program. While these received the new turret and gun, they did not receive the additional armor. This is the crux of the issue in War Thunder. Gaijin is modeling the tank as though it did receive the armor, probably for a few reasons. For one thing, one of the best sources for the tank's performance only lists the estimated performance of the original design, not the one that was built, so you can understand it would be a bit more difficult to extrapolate the performance of the actual vehicle. Second, the actual vehicle will be more difficult to balance. It essentially has a turret of a 6.7 vehicle with the hull of a tank at 4.7. This would make its BR relatively low. That would make it incredibly strong in hold-down positions, but pretty much useless everywhere else with the paper hole that can make it a higher BR, and therefore more consistent in terms of performance. The add-on armor isn't totally fictional though, as you can see by this concept art. I can't really tell if the plate itself is thickened or if it's an extra plate, like how it is in War Thunder, but it's not far off regardless. I don't think it's a big issue, since the actual vehicle was built and there were plans for the extra armor. I don't know how the majority of the player base feels though. In terms of how it'll perform in War Thunder, I imagine it won't perform well. At 10 horsepower per metric ton, its power to weight ratio is on par with the Super Pershing, but it only has a top speed of 28 km an hour. The corners of the hull are still exposed, and will be a fairly easy shot for anything. It's also worth noting that, since they used the T1E1 holes as a base, the hull will be cast in therefore weaker, as opposed to the welded hull on the M6A1. One benefit of the T1E1 hull is the electric transmission, which will allow it to reverse at full speed. The gun has a reload time of 10 seconds, the turret reverse speed is the same as the T29s, and it has 10 degrees of gun depression. Basically, your best bet is to play it very conservatively, but if you do get into trouble, you can reverse out of there pretty quickly. That's pretty much all there is to it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.